I've always wanted one of these. Well, I thought I did when I saw this in the shop last year. That is one Brazilian made machete. I don't know why I got it, but I've just discovered after 12 months of ownership, I've got a job for it today. So let's get on with that. Okay, so seeing that machete, you might be thinking, this seems a bit drastic uh, when we're looking at the butternut squashes and some zucchinis or courgettes and the cucumbers and more butternuts here. And you're right, a machete for that would be a bit drastic. However, it could well come in handy for the job that I've got to do in here today. And basically that is I need to do um, some pruning of these squashes. So in here we've got turks or tox as I call them which is a summer squash. There's some pumpkins in there somewhere. There's a couple of zucchini plants. You never know, you might even find some melons. But basically, I've got to start reducing these leaves. So let's get cracking. But not necessarily straight away with a machete. Well, first things first. I don't need that immediately. But I've got to start pruning and looking after these zucchinis because, um, first of all, the leaves are just way too big. It's a no-dig bed, as we know, because that's the system that I use. And they're growing very well. But I've got to try and prune these and treat them in a very similar way to how I look after tomatoes. So I'm going to start by reducing the leaf by taking away the lower leaves and as I'm go doing this I'm hoping at the same time to be able to harvest anything that's ready and I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to find in here so your guess is as good as mine did you watch that video I did about pest control if you did you would have been introduced to spike and if you didn't, you're probably wondering who Spike. Well, Spike is our resident hedgehog. I know he's around because he leaves me little presents most nights. And last year, I found him shading underneath these leaves. Not in this particular bed, they're in a different location. So... Okay, why am I doing this? Well, zucchinis, in fact all squash plants, suffer from powdery mildew, which is a fungal disease that affects the leaves of the plant and obviously inhibits growth. And so we need to stop that by putting back the leaves. Now as I'm doing this, you're going to start to see any fruits that are ready to be picked and we'll get a close-up of those in just a second because I can see a couple um, but the other reason to keep the leaf growth in check if you want is we need to be able to allow the pollinating insects to find the flowers and the plant that we want to get pollinated because if we don't do that you're not going to get any fruits. Okay, now I'm just looking through here. Um, we'll get a close-up in just a second. I just want to get this cleared out of the way first. Now, the thing, the other thing about zucchinis or squash, well, just say, let's just say squash plants, because, like I said, we've got a load of different types in here. But the principles are the same. I'll do weeding as I'm going. Um, I'm going to show you in a second the types of flowers that you get. So you get male and female flowers. So what we need to do is we need to get the pollinating insects like the bees to come onto the male flower to take the nectar. He picks up the pollen and then he goes straight over to the female flower and that's when he then pollinates. So we will now get a close-up of the types of flowers and what happens. So I've just got to figure out because they're such big plants how I can get in there to show you because they're monsters let's get close in 
I uh, hope you can pick this out, but if you look at this particular flower there, it's got quite a long stem. It's going down into the base of the plant. So that tells you that that's a male plant. So we need the bees to be coming onto this first, and then he comes onto the female flowers. I can't quite see them at the minute, and it's the female that then produces our fruits. And there we have it there. So you can see the difference. Get a bit more of a better angle for you. So there's the female here, and here's the male. You see that stem? That tells you that it's the male. The female is here, and this, this flower will eventually fall away, like so. You've probably seen in posh restaurants, you can actually order courgette flowers, and they're on the tiny little courgettes as well. Quite an expensive thing, but there you go. If you grow these, you can do them yourselves, and they're, they're deep fried often, the, the courgette flowers, in tempura batty, so it's a very fine batter. But anyway, let's get back to this Turk. Turk, tok. Spelt T-O-K, pronounced Turk. Well, there's no R. Okay. Let's get now for this particular job next. I don't need my machete, but I do want to harvest these guys. So what I'm going to do first, just to make it a little bit easier, take that particular leaf out there. And then, as with courgettes or zucchinis, you just all you're doing is you're cutting through the stalk of the fruit, nice and gently. You can twist them off, but I prefer to do it with a knife. And there we have a baby Turk. Pop him there. And we've got a larger one to the right hand side. So just get in, same as before. They're very soft, they don't quite. I knocked you over. Sorry about that. Hope I didn't hurt you. I'm just. Gently, I made a cut in there just before you fell over. Should put more water in it. Anyway, there you go. That's not a fair size. That's not a bad size. Now, this was just the right time to catch this because if it starts to go yellow like that, then it's just on the turn and they're no good. So you've got to get them this colour. So that's two quite good ones there. I can see I've got quite a few more inside here. So... I'm now going to go through, look, like, there's one here, look. So I do need to get these out and give them a good prune. So I'll crack on with this and let's see how we, how we do. Okay, I've got as far as I can really because of my size 9 shoes. I can't get any further in there without damaging any of the stems of the, um, of the plants. If we look at this one here, where I've cut it, you can see it's quite hollow. Well, quite hollow, it's hollow. If I stand on that, it's gonna break. So I don't want to do that. However, the lady of the house has much daintier feet than I do. So um, later on today, when she returns from work, I'm gonna get her in there. And she can do two things. And it's, to be honest, it's, it's easier with two people doing this. Um, one person can cut with their dainty little feet pass over the, the leaves for me to um, get rid of and also at the same time any fruits that they can harvest that are in there um, do that at the same time and pass them across. I have harvested them um, some already and we'll have a look at those in just one second but I thought I'd just show you how this plant grows. Okay so we've already spoken about these lovely little flowers and that we need the males to be attractive to the bees so by pruning it, the bees can actually see where they are, and then they go on to the females, and that's what produces our fruit. But these guys spread, and they grow quite rapidly. And if we look at this, they got these. They send out these little tendrils, a bit like runner beans do, and they get on that floor, and off they go. Now, I know that some people are trying to, um, or are succeeding rather, rather than trying, they are growing them up trestles and frames. But 
for me, if I did that, I'd have to try and figure out a way of supporting the weight of the fruits as they develop. See, there is a whole host. It's like a coiled spring. It's quite strong. And it's hanging onto that blade of grass. I'll just take that away. And there you can see they've got the flowers on the side there. So this will go for quite some distance if it's allowed to. So I've got to decide how far I want these things to spread. Look at that. He's right in there. That is a big bee. Do you think that's because I've just been pruning? But look at him. He's a monster. He's having a good feed in there. So he's going to go on to another plant, collect more pollen. That's how it works. While we're filming this one, there he goes. That is a bee. Whoa. Okay, guys. He's looking at me thinking, get out of the way. He's a big fellow, isn't he? <laughs> I'm going to move. I don't want him stinging. That tiny me. little plant there. He's miles bigger than this. When he comes out, I'm going to move. He's a big fella. Here he comes. Oh, he reversed. <laughs> He's Brilliant. still in there. And I wonder, would you have seen those? I hadn't pruned them back. I'm going to say no, he wouldn't have done. So I've done a good job. Makes me feel better. Okay, back to these guys spreading out. Um, I love an experiment. Now, this is growing. There's his tentacles. There's a female fruit there. And it's come all the way from over there. That's got to be four or five feet. Certainly a metre and a half. I'm curious to see how far that's going to grow and how productive it's going to be. So I'm going to leave it. And I've got another one this side here. In fact, two. It's just opposite the kneading pad going towards the wheelbarrow. So let's just see how far they get. OK, so the, going back to the, the main reason for doing this, I need to make sure that I've got enough air circulation to reduce the chances of powdery mildew on here. That's the first thing um, that we need to be looking at doing. Secondly, obviously, we want to be harvesting the crops because the more you harvest, the more you get. And thirdly, in order to actually get those crops, you need the bees to be able to see the flowers, as we've just seen, um, to get that pollination going, to get those fruits. So now, having done that, it's quite a close day today. It's very warm. And I'm now looking at um, making sure I can get as much air around these things as possible. So I'm looking at where we've increased the biodiversity there. And I can see that there isn't a, a lot of flowering plants. So I might just knock that back a little bit. I've got to consider that beyond the fence there, I've got a huge field of wheat that's waiting to be harvested. So um, maybe that's going to help me a little bit. But reduce the height of that. And I've also reduced the height of this little square that we had prior to pruning the, the, um, the squashes. So what I'll do there is I've just quickly gone across there with a modified electric scythe, shall we say. I'll run the mower across that to get it low. And then I have more of an airflow coming through that particular bed of squashes. The other thing you'll find with these guys is that the stalks themselves quite hairy, quite spiky, um, and you need to be a little bit careful, treat them with a little bit of um, gentleness because they will stab you and they can be quite irritating. So um, just bear that in mind. And also when you're looking at things like courgettes or zucchinis, I don't quite know how that's happened, that name change, but never mind. Zucchinis will give you a bit of colouring on their leaves, which is quite natural. So don't mistake that for powdery mildew. It's a, it's a common thing to do. But yeah, just bear in mind that zucchini plants will give you a bit of discoloration. So you might think you've got powdery mildew, but on closer inspection, you haven't. It's just the, just the colour of the leaves. Now these butternuts, again, similar to all the other ones we've been looking at this morning, you can see they're sending out their little um, vines, if you want, and they're spreading along the ground. We've got some flowers beginning to show over. 
So hopefully when the bees have finished over there, they'll come across to here and start pollinating these. Um, so that's looking quite good. Obviously I want to keep them within this frame here. There's only three plants in there, but you can see that they take up quite a bit of space. Well, I never did get to use my machete. So instead I'm using the trug. And that is so that I can start to put in these guys that we've already harvested. Now, let's just see if you can spot any mistakes that I've made. Let's pop those there. Get these guys in here. Now, there we go. I've got over the excitement of the bee. Really pleased to see that. That was amazing. What we do now is we'll get these weighed and um, get them inside, ready to have the soup made. Well, goodness me, it's quite warm up in that squash bed. But it was exciting. That was amazing to see that bee. Now, as with a lot of plants, we're looking at, um, I think the dog's suffering in the heat today. Yeah, so we're looking at keeping the air circulation around these plants because we don't want um, things like, in the case of tomatoes, we don't want blight to come in. Um, and in the case of roses, they can pick up all kinds of, um, of diseases in their, in their leaves. So they need a good air circulation as well. <coughs> Excuse me. And in the case of the squash, as we've seen there, what we're trying to do is reduce the um, incidence of powdery mildew. And by pruning back the leaves of either tomatoes, roses and or squash plants, that is going to help us no end. And the other part of that, as we, as we realised before I was bombed by that bee, it makes the flowers a lot more visible to the pollinating insects. And that's what we need in order to get our harvest. So great all round. Now imagine if you were in the garden doing what I've just been doing. I've just seen a butterfly landing on a buddleia flower. The, the entertainment value for a child to see this is incredible. Um, and it encourages them to be involved and not be frightened of these kinds of things. So there's another great bonus. So we've got a, we're going to get a good harvest. We're going to have healthy crops. Any prunes go on the compost to increase our, our compost supplies and the kids can get to enjoy themselves outside, but also eat some decent fruit. Now it's warm, hence me wearing my hat and I need to go and get myself a great big drink of water. So for now, take care and I'll catch up with you very, very soon. Come on, Rada, let's go and get a drink. Come on, girl.